we have now got 14 days to go until the midterms. And as we mentioned, polls show the Democrats do have an advantage to take control of the House as of now. One popular adage is that Wall Street likes gridlock in Washington because it diminishes the likelihood of major legislation that can upset the markets. But would a blue tsunami change the game? Let's bring in Gus Skacko of Hudson Valley Investment Advisors. Gus, good morning. Good morning. Barclays had a really interesting note about a, a possible blue tsunami, saying that that would, quote, uh, be a negative for markets if, for some reason, Democrats did take control of the House and the Senate on November 6. What do you make of Barclays' uh, call and concern for investors about the midterms? Well, right now, the economy is very strong, and the reason for that is we've had um, regulations have been pulled back, taxes have been cut, and I think Wall Street would be a little bit upset if there's um, a massive change in terms of uh, Democratic leadership. What would happen in that instance is there may, might be some undoing of the legislation that's gone through that's helped to stimulate this economy. We had 4.2 percent GDP growth in the prior quarter. We'll probably be 3 percent growth plus through the remainder of the year, and somewhere close to that as we head into 2019. So. Mm -hmm. Overall, I think that there would cause some upsetness in the market, for lack of a better term. Yeah, for a tsunami. But then Morgan Stanley says, look, there would be limited ram ramifications for investors if it was just the house uh, that went blue, which seems maybe more a likely scenario. Again, we've got two weeks to go. Right. But markets are politically sensitive, whether it was Brexit, whether it was the 2016 election, which, of course, took many surprises. That was a good thing for the markets. But the federal budget deficit continues to grow. And no matter what happens after November 6, markets and, and investors in particular are still concerned about what we're seeing in the, in the federal debt. We've had a lot of debt. Um, we've overspent uh, for a number of years. And there was some pullback. But we're growing the economy now. And the thought is that you're going to be able to grow out of this over time. We've stimulated the economy in a positive way. It's led to increased in, um, uh, investment into the economy. And you're seeing productivity lift, things of that nature, which should bring additional tax dollars back to the federal government. Yeah. We have to live within our means. That's without a doubt. But once again, we're, we're still growing better than we had been. And that uh, yes. adds more tax dollars hey, to my the grand, rolls. My granddad always said, live, live in your means. But, you That's know, right. let's, real quick, let's talk about one of the, big, one of the last big uh, reports we're going to get before November 6th. And that, of course, is GDP. We're going to get the first read for third quarter GDP. And the estimate, a little bit lower than what we saw in the third quarter, but still the estimate is 3.3% right now, Gus. Would that be enough, do you think, to power Republicans to actually stay in power? Yes, I believe it does. Um, we were at 2% prior to the president coming into power. Right now, we've been above uh, 3 quite handily, and I think that'll continue. And people vote with their pocketbooks. Right now, mm -hmm. if you look at the consumer, consumer confidence is strong, jobs are strong, and we're seeing the vestiges are just a start in terms of wage growth. So all those things point to, you know, people voting with their pocketbook, and it should be good for the incumbents. Gus Skacko, so much to talk about as we get closer to Election yes. Day. Gus, thank you very much. Thank you for having me.